everyone here again is upstream health with ify i hope everyone is doing okay so today i'm gonna be pinning this topic on uh, diabetes based on the multiple questions great questions by the way that have been receiving concerning um the videos i put up on about diabetes and diet so people want to know how to bring down their a1c or their blood glucose level so your a1c we're talking about the glucose in your blood so my audience want to know how they can bring down their glucose they've been told my their glucose is high the glucose in their blood is high or the sugar in their blood is high so i'm gonna make it very simple step by step how you can bring down your blood glucose level okay but before i do that let us quickly talk about again the science behind diabetes I'm going to make it very simple in very layman term. So, diabetes is a sugar problem, sugar glucose problem, anything sweet problem. So, where does your body get sugar? So, right now, we're far beyond talking about if you're consuming sugar. Remember, no sugar, throw away sugar. So, now, People are concerned about other hidden sources of sugar. Where is this sugar coming from? We're not talking about if you're consuming sugar. So I know nobody here is, is eating sugar or using sugar. So sugar, you're gonna find hidden in food. So let's talk about the science behind diabetes. So diabetes is all about sugar in your blood you have an organ called pancreas right it produces insulin anytime you consume food with sugar or let's put it this way carbohydrate is a source of sugar any carbohydrate food is a source of sugar am i saying to stay away from carbohydrate we're gonna get to that later but carbohydrate is a very heavy source of sugar so anytime you consume carbohydrate not to talk of taking sugar or food snacks um, processed food snacks with uh, 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 let me say snacks cakes whatever that has sugar your the pancreas that organ releases insulin insulin is released when your body senses glucose in your blood so think about let's say this is a cup of soda that i'm having this is tea this is dandelion root tea by the way so let's say this is soda soda right i consume this as soon as i take this down after some minutes that organ called pancreas will put out insulin in my blood so that insulin can go take out the glucose or the sugar from my blood it goes and stores it in muscles in organs that needs it in form of glycogen another form of energy so that when you need it you burn that and use up as energy good so each time you do that think about it. each time you do that your pancreas releases insulin each time you eat if you eat five times six times a day sugar your insulin so what are you doing to your insulin your insulin is overworking producing insulin your sorry your pancreas is overworking itself pumping out insulin to your blood and after a time it begins to irritate your blood vessels and then your blood your your the organs around or the cells the tissues will begin to resist and they'll say hey do not go near insulin it's damaging so it becomes resistance that's what is called insulin resistance so when you it cause insulin spike by over consuming sugar or eating all the time and other things involved your pancreas is overworking, producing too much insulin, and your body begins to adjust or it builds up a defensive mechanism called insulin resistance that causes uncontrolled blood glucose. One minute. Okay, guys, so I just explained to you guys the root problem, insulin resistance. So let's look at it this way. 
diabetes has a lot of issues involved but no, the number one is is insulin resistance but we're going to look at it in a broader way diabetes if you want to control your blood glucose you need to look at this broad topic metabolic syndrome metabolic syndrome number one is belly fat overweight if you have all this you work on that if you've been working on that that should help control your blood glucose number two is abnormal cholesterol level if you're diabetic and you don't know your cholesterol number you should go find out because if it's high if it's overboard your blood glucose cannot be controlled you need to put the glucose in check sorry the cholesterol in check before you can um, control your blood glucose the other one is if you have consistently high blood pressure when your blood pressure is consistently high and you're not doing anything about it the diabetes cannot be controlled okay and the big one is insulin resistance that was what I just explained insulin resistance is one huge one people can work on their weight people can control the blood cholesterol or blood pressure but insulin resistance is a big major problem in controlling blood glucose because the blood pressure is involved the cholesterol is involved insulin resistance is all about diet is all about what we put in our mouth it's all about working with the pancreas to control how insulin regulates blood glucose so i did talk about talk to you people about how when you consume like soda it spikes and your tissues get angry and they begin to resist insulin remains in the blood and the glucose is not able to take out the glucose and the glucose remains there and you have high glucose okay so let's look deeper into insulin resistance how can we take care of this insulin resistance the one thing is diet food which is what i'm gonna be speaking so i did talk to you let's start from carbohydrate so one you're gonna reduce the type reduce the amount of carbohydrate you consume in a time there is a group of um a group or a group that believes stay away completely from carbohydrate like i will recommend that if your blood look your a1c is skyrocketed like above 8 10 i'll recommend staying away from carbohydrate for some time and working on your is uh, your glucose level but if it's below seven you can have your carbohydrate food but the type of carbohydrate food you can have a uh, whole grain carbohydrate and when you're getting whole grain if you're gonna have it portion control and you can have like you can have carbohydrate every day or in your two meals in a day you can have carbohydrate every day it should be the lowest portion of food if you're gonna get quinoa or whole wheat or burger or millet it should be very little and the rest should be protein vegetables and you shouldn't have it all the time maybe once in a week carbohydrate like oatmeal if you love oatmeal i did a video you can see the quantity that i did so just little portion control number one portion control if you're gonna have that carbohydrate whole grain complex carbohydrate not refined carbohydrate not processed carbohydrate not white rice it's gonna be whole grain brown rice if you're gonna have it organic little portion all right little portion both for diabetic and non-diabetic you should get portion control implemented so i brought this plate so one of the ways you can control blood glucose is discipline 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 so let me quickly get this so as i was saying discipline discipline this is a big plate this is a smaller one always work on using a smaller plate to eat okay if you're from africa especially our men from africa they love bigger plates okay 
the wife use a smaller plate to serving remind him for this blood glucose to be controlled you need a smaller serving plate a smaller plate if you're eating i know we love um plantain meal um oatmeal a little just a little of you see my hand just a little and then more soup if it's vegetable soup if it's a goosey soup that's a melon soup okra soup that whatever soup so i'm speaking to my african family here so that a little um, no pounded yam okay i said plantain like on ripe plantain is high carbohydrate even if it's on ripe it's also high carbohydrate but when you make it yourself just a little but make sure you have it with a lot a lot of vegetables okay that way the fiber in a vegetable will prevent spiking of your blood glucose so anytime you're gonna eat a carbohydrate food make sure little portion control and then make sure you're having with a lot of fiber food a lot of fiber food that way it doesn't spike the fiber will help in controlling blood glucose remember about fiber when you eat a lot of food of fiber vegetables fruits with high fiber your bacteria will break down that fiber into what is called butyrate that helps in controlling cholesterol and blood glucose so whenever you're gonna consume a carbohydrate whole grain carbohydrate please make sure it's little and make sure you're having it with enough vegetable and it should be maybe twice a week i know african fam family sunday will want to have rice it should be brown rice little portion enough vegetable and you can have your meat okay you can have um grass-fed organic meat or your chicken your fowl however you want to have it okay but you have to work on the carbohydrate carbohydrate is sugar so anytime you're consuming soda you put it down remember you're you're putting your pancreas that organ you're putting a lot of body a need to produce insulin and you're spiking your insulin that way you you become pre-diabetic or you're making the diabetic worse so you can actually bring down your a1c by doing this so that's number one and then the second one i did in the other video if you want to do smoothie it's better you do a smooth uh, a smoothie than juicing if you're diabetic juicing can spike your blood glucose that's number one that's number two and then number three another thing you i i I highly recommend, especially if your blood glucose is still on control, intermittent fasting. Do not eat, you don't have to have that breakfast. You do not have to have that breakfast. I'm not talking to those who are on insulin. If you're insulin, you need to eat before you inject that insulin. For those who are not on insulin or who are pre-diabetic or those who want to prevent diabetic, intermittent fasting is very important so you can read about that i have i have someone who is going to speak to us about intermittent fasting but basically is you don't have to have a breakfast you can wait like morning you wake up and in the morning usually your glucose level is high you have enough energy so go ahead make tea i did a video about tea go watch that video you make your tea and up you go like here i have my tea it's one two, it's i think it's 130 now i haven't eaten anything you have your tea maybe two cups before noon you, you're not gonna feel hungry and your body listens to you over time you find that you get used to it it's a habit our body loves loves uh learning habits so it gets used to habit so if you start it you find that you don't get hungry and it will not only help control your blood glucose you find that you're losing weight without even knowing it and you're gonna feel good inside you're gonna feel good and more motivated okay and okay so again about diet your food the kind of oil that you use in cooking is very important i spoke to you guys in my last video no deep frying when you deep fry your oil you release free oxygen radicals that is very unhealthy for your body do not deep fry i showed you guys how to make a tomato sauce you make your tomato boil it and then 
pour in the olive oil don't go frying the oil and pour in the that's how we used to do it but now you make your tomato or your soup i'll tell you guys how i made my melon soup i make my melon soup buy the meat whatever everything and then after making with the stock i point like two tablespoons of olive oil i use bell pepper to make it it looks red and you think i have oil i put it and then i put my melon uh, mix and that's it put enough vegetable and you will enjoy it and palm oil i have got questions on palm oil palm oil is very healthy but depending on where you're getting it you don't know how it's been made it's highly processed sometimes so the seed the seed, when they get it from the seed you know the palm kernel nuts when they get it from the fruit sorry not the seed it's actually the fruit palm kernel fruit if that is even healthier if you make it yourself but the palm oil itself i don't use i get the palm fruit get a palm fruit and then boil it and extract the juice and i use it for my soup and i don't use it all the time okay so that's another way to enjoy your palm oil the palm oil or the palm fruit oil which is very healthy so olive oil very healthy so research is there that vegetable seed oils are unhealthy vegetable seed oil like the sunflower the canola the safflower the cotton seed oil research out there is saying it's unhealthy I don't usually I don't use it a lot I prefer stay with my olive oil the reason why this is my personal opinion vegetable seed oil are unhealthy because of the way they are processed they are easily oxidized they are easily oxidized and they are and, and they are inflammatory also and another thing I read about vegetable seed oil is that the percentage of omega-6 um, fatty acid in comparison to omega-3 which is the healthy is higher we need more of omega-3 than omega-6 so research says vegetable seed oil has more omega-6 which we don't need too much of that what we need is omega-3 so because of that I don't even touch canola oil or the safflower oil or the sunset oil so i just stay with the olive oil which i know is a fruit oil you know the olive fruit that's where they get the oil so any oil that comes from a fruit instead of seed is healthier so i recommend you stay on vegetable fruit oils okay avocado is very good avocado oil very good olive oil very good and make sure you're getting the organic olive oil go to a whole, a whole uh, food store to get yours and believe me we don't need too much of this oil like people say it's expensive it depends on how you use it you don't have to fry your oil before you put in whatever you put whatever you want to put and then you see you need less oil in the soup or in the stew or whatever you're making it with okay or with your eggs however you want to make it and nobody's frying meat anymore you don't fry people use um your oven you can bake it people use uh, what do you call it air fryer you don't have to fry your meat anymore deep frying releases free oxygen which is very dangerous to health and also cancer so stay away from that and then controlling blood glucose again you need your tea your green tea watch my video about the healthy benefits of green tea egcg all those nutrients your body needs it for repair green tea make it a habit that you're having tea make it a habit that you, you your body will begin to crave it healthy there are healthy teas out there green tea very healthy and then the next one again about diet herbs and spices you need to go uh, fill up your uh, kitchen pantry with spices, herbs, season your meat, very heavy season your salad or put in your salad. Cinnamon is very good in controlling blood glucose. You can, the way I have it is 
usually i put um it's also good for weight loss you can use it for so many things cinnamon but very good cinnamon is a very powerful antioxidant anti-fungal antibiotic a lot of stuff with cinnamon i love cinnamon in almost everything that i'm having you can put a cup of uh, water put a teaspoon of cinnamon put like two tablespoon of apple cider water and you drink it and go to bed so cinnamon very powerful in controlling blood glucose and talking about diet again vitamin d helps your pancreas like we have the the cells in in pancreas that releases ins, that releases insulin right the better cells releases the insulin right so vitamin d helps in regenerating better cells so vitamin d is very important your vitamins your trace mineral minerals very important and another one is about portion control i did talk about portion control then eating less frequently so i think i'll put that under intermittent fasting eat less frequently if you eat like five times a day you're spiking your insulin each time you do that and your body is going out of order so eat less frequently say i break my fast this is to two i don't eat and you don't even have to eat if you're not hungry don't eat if you're not not hungry like i remember when growing up i don't know where it's written i don't know why people believe we must eat three times a day it's not written anywhere that you should eat three times a day you don't have to eat if you don't feel hungry so enjoy your food eat less frequently i'm not talking about kids adults now because as we age our body takes time to repair but you have to feed it with the resources that it needs to repair by eating healthy so you don't have to eat three times or four times maybe twice or even once and then you can have like salad snack with your nuts your green tea and that way you feel you feel more energetic okay and um, the other one I wanted to talk about I did talk to you guys about the oil your vitamins, your vitamin D, your herbs and spices, your green tea, eating less frequently, implement intermittent fasting, read your food labels, no junk food, no soda, no, don't even talk about sugar, don't bring sugar into your home. Take away those unhealthy snacks, take away alcohol take away smoking when you begin to do this you find out that you even begin to lose weight without even going to the gym hi guys welcome back sometimes it gets so difficult to make this video my son just came in that was why he had that noise but that's part of reality i want to i remember i told you guys that my video will be um not so professional but what is so informal so that we can be relaxed in the real world we don't want it to be like a movie or or what do you call it what do you guys call it? i don't want it to be a movie i want it to see the real world here okay my son just came in that was the noise so i had to stop the video and then come back okay so controlling your blood glucose bringing down your a1c I just listed it please watch this video I believe I gave out a lot of information watch this video if you still have questions let me know we have our website upstream to downstream health.org you can always that always go there to sign in an intake form we have other ways we can you know coach you on diet and um, things more personal but here i just want to give you guys um, not a flood of information to overwhelm you but just healthy tips that you can start implementing and also researching because i give you this information i also expect you to also research if you have the uh, access but if you don't feel free to ask me go to my instagram page and ask me those questions and just like i came out today to say, do this i'll come out again to explain okay so make sure you're doing all this portion control eat less frequently if you must have your carbs low uh, very uh, portion very um, small portion and it doesn't have to be every day you can eat brown rice every day you can eat or you can have oatmeal every day maybe two or three times in a week that way you are helping your 
pancreas to rest and then your body has other sources of getting um glucose like your liver breaks down proteins and fats to get glucose it doesn't have to come from carbohydrate so you are saving your body that stress of you know packing up extra um, glucose or extra calorie when your body has reserves that it can use so that way you're able to control glucose and there will there will be nothing like insulin resistance which is a major problem okay so you guys if you haven't subscribed to my video please do so like it comment share it with your friends family and loved ones and run to my instagram page subscribe and ask me questions and if you want to have know more about what we do at upstream health go to our website upstream to downstream health okay so have a beautiful rest of your day and stay blessed